I'm Kevin Garcia King. I am Maria Ruano Najarro. And this is Sounds, Sounds Like, like infrastructure. infrastructure. When a hurricane uh, goes to the coast, one of the first things that you can notice is that the weather is changing. You can go from a clear day with no clouds to rain. The rain will continue to increase during the day, and first we have showers, then thunderstorms, and with those bands of rain, we can get some tornadoes. When the rain starts to fall over and over during the day, you get the flood, so it's very dangerous for the residents. Albert Martinez is a meteorologist based in Atlanta. He works for the Weather Channel. Albert has lived and covered hurricanes across the U.S. in Miami, Houston, and Louisiana, among others. In this episode, he will be our eyes and ears so we can understand how we deal with this phenomenon, though hopefully we never have to experience it. If today you were told that a hurricane was approaching your home, your city, you would probably ask yourself two key questions. Number one, what should I do? And number two, is my city prepared for this? And therefore, how much time do I have to react? Here, we face with an ultimate question. How far in advance can a hurricane be foreseen? Weather models normally run 10 days ahead. So we can notice the change of the tropical storm formation a week before it happens. There are many factors that determine the accuracy of our predictions of a hurricane's path. The temperature of the waters over which it forms and moves, whether it travels over islands, or even the size of the storm. But until 24 hours ahead, 36 hours ahead, is when we can track uh, more accurate the center of the system and where it will make landfall. So then they can issue the warnings so the people can evacuate, prepare their homes, and the most important, uh, be ready for the impact. Hurricane Harvey was very difficult and very hard on the Houston community. Edgar Acosta is the Sign Bill Estimated Manager at Weber, a ferrobial subsidiary. He lives and works in Houston, and he witnessed firsthand the arrival of Hurricane Harvey back in 2017. I, I don't think there's anyone that doesn't know someone that was affected or affected themselves. Um, Fortunately, in my case, my neighborhood sits a tiny bit higher than the other, so we could see the water, but it, it, it didn't get really close to our neighborhood. Edgar describes flooded houses with 20 inches of water. So many of his neighbors lost everything. It was a Friday when Hurricane Harvey, I think, actually was going to make landfall and we knew exactly where it was going to come in and where it was going to impact. Daniel Morrow is construction manager at Weber. He lives in Cleveland, Texas, on a home up a hill, usually sheltered from heavy rains and floods. That was until Harvey. Hurricanes, they don't hit real fast. It takes them hours and hours and hours to finally make landfall and start doing their thing. And and, uh, so, you know, we went through Friday night uh into saturday we still had power like the power wasn't out uh everything was still was still good just a lot of wind you know starting to see a lot of that rain uh the rain was not accumulating yet you know no big deal so we go on into saturday and we go into sunday but as the water starts rising you go out and you put like a stake in the ground at the edge of the water and then every hour or two hours you can go back and look Sunday morning, from where the water was at, where we went to bed Sunday night, and we woke up Monday morning, the water had moved within, I don't know, two or three hours that morning, uh, that water had rose another probably eight foot. Daniel's home flooded, lifted from its foundations and turned over by the force of the water. What seemed like just another storm in a matter of hours led to a complete loss.
to try and predict the possible consequences of a hurricane, one of the variables to consider is the intensity of the storm. To measure it, we use the Sapphire-Simpson scale, which classifies tropical storms and hurricanes from 1 to 5, with 5 being the most powerful hurricanes, hurricanes that reach winds of up to 170 miles per hour. They have an additionally dangerous feature, the eye of the hurricane. And it's very dangerous to be in the eye of the hurricane because first we have the winds, the rain, the tornadoes, then the calm, and not long after the other side of the a wall uh, with the winds in the opposite direction from the front side. And this is what can uh, break down trees, power lines, roads, uh, houses, because the change of the direction of the wind is very strong and it happens quickly in just a few minutes. When we face very unpredictable situations, this is where engineering can bring us very useful solutions. On the coast of Miami, an area particularly exposed to large storms, we encounter the Port Miami Tunnel, a 0.8 mile long roadway that runs underwater. An underwater tunnel that handles a high volume of truck traffic to the city's port. As you can probably imagine, the arrival of a hurricane poses a significant challenge to manage this infrastructure. A, you have to do a lot of planning, right? So you have to know uh, to watch and pay attention to the hurricanes, what they're doing as they come up off of Africa and they're coming across the Atlantic there and they're, they're aiming at us. So Paul Stanton is business director at Weber. His team manages the Port of Miami Tunnel when abnormal weather arrives to the city. The tunnel has a drainage and pumping system in case of rain, when manageable amounts of water enter. If a major storm is expected, the emergency systems are activated. In Miami, we, we take care of the tunnel and we have floodgates that, that close off. For, so every storm that comes through, part of the preparation is to ensure that we uh, can lower those floodgates. Uh, and it takes a, a certain amount of time to do that. And those floodgates are there to help protect the tunnel as an asset in case a storm surge or flooding occurs that the tunnel itself will, will remain uh, potentially unharmed. This happens four or five times each hurricane season, which runs every year from June 1st to November 30th. After the storm has passed, they need to wait for the authorities' permission to reopen. And then once the um, conditions allow, then we reopen the, the tunnel floodgates and allow the usage of the tunnel once again. But it is not only about securing the infrastructure, it is about keeping people safe. The bigger issue, the jobs that are that are actually on the coast where people are going to need to evacuate, you know, we always need to keep in mind that we're going to need to be able to provide access for people to, to get out of the area. Ryan McCullough is Vice President of Heavy Civil Operations at Weber. Born and raised in Houston, he is one of the people responsible for putting engineering at the service of public safety during hurricane season. Once a major hurricane is identified, a approach in a specific location, the authorities issue an evacuation alert. The population is advised to leave the city. The roadways, when, when there's a major storm coming and people are trying to evacuate, they're like a parking lot. I mean, it's just, it's completely full of traffic. And I don't think you ever get everybody out that wanted to get out. This is where the engineering comes in. Ryan and his team are building two major bridges on the Texas coast, one in Kima, south of Houston, and another in the city of Corpus Christi. Both are designed to provide a quick route for people, help traffic flow more smoothly in the event of an evacuation, and quickly change the direction of traffic if more capacity is needed to get out of the city. During that time frame, uh, you know, we're, we're constantly talking with TxDOT to make sure whatever uh, traffic configurations uh, we have on the project, um, that we'll be able to modify those in a, in a timely manner to, to, you know, the most, the most common method is contraflow where you, you reverse the, the direction of lanes going towards the coast, you know, so everyone can, can get out in the same direction. So, can we make sure our traffic control plan uh, will accommodate that if, if we need to? In just 24 hours, the asphalt and roadside markings changed completely. 
This is done as quickly as possible to ensure the safety of the population. And when the emergency is over, everything returns to its original state. And then here we are, the calm after the storm. After Harvey, it's time to recover. Professional expertise goes a long way in repairing the damage. In Houston, Edgar Acosta and his colleagues at Weber decided to spend their weekends helping rebuild damaged homes in the area. Houston has had, the area has had previous events, flooding events, not to the magnitude of Harvey, but prior to that, we've had several and Several of us in the community are familiar with what it takes to rebuild. And unfortunately, part of that rebuilding process is a lot of almost tearing down to start over. You have to remove the parts of the home that have been affected. Um, and you got to start somewhere. The sooner you can get started, the better. So it's almost like with our construction projects. It, it, once we get a contract, we have to go out there and build it. And the quicker we build it, the better. Edgar participated in the reconstruction of between 10 and 15 houses in a process that took about eight months of work. All the while, other Weber employees helped rebuild his colleague Daniel's home. Weber came through in such a, such a profound way for a lot of people, not just me, but for a lot of people during this time of crisis and uh you know weber actually sent a crew out to my house with equipment to help me get my house tore down and moved and out of the way so that we could restart the building process uh without that trying to you know tear my house down by hand or, or something like that would have taken months you know months and months to do and weber sent a crew out and we did it in in a day Albert Martinez has lived through several hurricanes in his professional and personal life. But has he ever felt safe when facing one? In Houston, I wasn't uh, scary by then because uh, we were, had a lockdown inside the TV station. So we were there together with a lot of people, with a lot of expertise on this kind of system because Houston is a, a vulnerable area with uh, hurricane. So I was fine. It's dangerous be outside during a hurricane. But when we cover uh, for the TV station, uh, it's you have a lot of adrenaline, uh, but it's uh, we, I, I feel safe uh, with them. That's the key to safety. People. Professionals who do the best possible job and try to anticipate any risky situation such as the closure of the Port Miami Tunnel in the face of flooding. So you have to wait till all that clears out and you don't want to be out and get caught out uh, in, around, near the tunnel or, or even in Florida on any bridges when the conditions are bad. Nonetheless, personal safety ultimately depends on making the right decisions to avoid danger. And it's important to keep the forecast because the hurricane can change uh, quickly. When it goes to the coast, it can move a few miles to what the right, to the left, and the weather can change completely. The most active part of a hurricane is the front right. So if we are on that area, the rain, the wind, the tornadoes and the floods will be catastrophic. But if we are on the other side, we may get some rain, maybe some wind, but we can be fine. So that's why it's so important to uh, keep tracking the hurricanes when they go uh, to the coast. As Edgar and Daniel have reminded us, there is something much more important than buildings, than construction, than any tool in the box. But what has happened, what I've noticed here in Houston, is that people are a lot more willing to help each other immediately. It's, it's not enough to say, okay, I'm okay. And you say, okay, I'm okay, I don't have to worry. If you're okay, you're willing to go out there and find out who needs help. Everything in your house can be replaced. Everything can be replaced, but a life can't be replaced. And uh, people, you know, listen, every, every hurricane, every flooding event that we have 
in the greater Houston area, people die. I mean, it's, it's a fact. They do. They either drive through high water that they shouldn't drive through or they stay in their house too long and then they can't get out. And, you know, you always think it's not going to happen to you. It's not going to happen to you. Well, when it happens, it is a very, it is a very scary thing to, I don't know, it's very scary. And uh, all I can say, you know, if anybody is hearing this podcast from here and get out, go somewhere else, you know, I mean, go somewhere you know is going to be safe. Don't risk it. it. It's not worth the risk. Thanks to Albert Martinez, Edgar Acosta, Paul Staten, Daniel Morrow, and Ryan McCalla for making this episode possible and for helping us understand what to do when facing such an extreme phenomenon. Sounds of Infrastructure is a collaboration between Ferrovia and Yes We Cast. Our team includes Francisco Izuzquiza, Alberto Espinosa, Sergio F. Núñez, Luciano Branca, Maria Ruano Najarro, and myself, Kevin Garcia King. If you are hungry for more, you can enjoy many more stories by listening to our other Sounds Like Infrastructure episodes or having a look at our blog. I am Maria Ruano Najarro. I'm Kevin Garcia King, and this is Sounds, Sounds like, like Infrastructure. infrastructure.